When you look at a digital sign, you simply see the content that is currently playing on it. Well, that's exactly how it should work. But what if we open the curtain and glimpse behind the scenes? To find out how this actually works, what hardware and tools are used so that you can see this very content right now. Hi guys, my name is Gabriel and welcome to Look Academy, where we teach you skills that are somehow useful when working with digital signage completely free and without any final exams. You're currently watching the second episode of our new course all about digital signage hardware. A week ago, in the first episode, we considered the most popular types of digital displays currently existing on the market. By the way, take a look if you still have not, link in the description below. And today, we'll talk about other types of hardware that are most commonly used when deploying digital signage projects. But before we begin, I recommend you subscribe to the channel and press the bell so that at the minimum, you don't miss the final third episode of our course in which we will give you a detailed guide on how to efficiently select hardware for specific digital signage projects. Well, it's time to start. And the first type of hardware that we'll talk about is digital signage players. Generally speaking, this concept also includes software players, but today we'll talk about specifically hardware options. First, let's figure out what it is and why we need it. Essentially, these are portable PCs that, as a rule, plug into a digital signage display via an HDMI connector, becoming a signal source and control device for it. Simply put, we can call it the brain of digital signage. It is worth noting here that most modern displays are SOC devices. It means that they have their own PC inside with an operating system and can play content using built-in media players or connect to digital signage software by installing special applications. However, what if your screen does not have an operating system or it does have one, but it is not supported by your chosen digital signage software? In addition, there are video walls, LED screens and projectors for which the presence of an external signal source is mandatory. This is where digital signage players come into play. When we talk about digital signage, hardware media players can be divided into two different groups. Consumer streaming devices and professional digital signage players. Let's start with the consumer options, which due to their affordable price are often the choice when deploying budget solutions. As a rule, these are devices created for watching streaming platforms and gaming, running mainly on the Android OS, including Android TV and Google TV, less often on Windows or Raspberry Pi. The most popular options include Amazon Fire TV Stick, Google Chromecast, Xiaomi Mi Stick, Nokia Streaming Box, Intel Compute Stick, and etc. And indeed, 60 or 80 bucks per device looks very tempting. However, it is worth remembering that these devices are designed for home and not industrial use at all. They are not powerful enough for complex digital signage scenarios where the screen is divided into zones and will not be able to produce reliable performance over time. This is where we come to professional digital signage players. These devices are made specifically for business use. They have durable housings, with increased protection rate and different mounting options. Along with it, they also have powerful hardware characteristics and offer additional interfaces for connecting third-party devices. In addition, they are designed to operate 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The most common operating systems are Android and Windows, but some players run their own proprietary firmware. The most notable market players include Brightsign, Spinatix, Aopan, iBase and uh, Videotel. Often such devices come with pre-installed software which can be free of charge but usually basic in functionality. That is why a number of manufacturers such as Brightsign for example are creating an ecosystem of digital signage software vendors around their devices thus giving their clients more options when choosing a management system. At the same time there is a parallel process in which many digital signage software providers are releasing in-house hardware players, strengthening their offerings and market positions. LookDS, by the way, has its own line of powerful yet affordable players. 
you can find the link to the store in the description below. The main disadvantage of professional digital signage players, of course, is the price. Starting around 300 US dollars and reaching several thousand. But here it is important to clearly understand your tasks and whether it is worth overpaying in your case or not. Well, let's move on. Now we're going to talk about more specific auxiliary hardware that is used in projects with specific requirements and tasks. Let's begin with video wall controllers, which simply put, split the image into pieces for display on each individual video wall panel. So the full visualization can be displayed correctly across many flat panels. Without them, you would just have a mosaic effect with each screen displaying different content. The controller acts as a regulator, ensuring that every bit of content arrives and is displayed on the panel to create a large seamless image. To be fair, it is worth noting that today, when installing video walls, it is quite possible to do without the controller. This is possible if your displays support daisy chain technology. In this case, you can use a media player plugged into the panel that is the first in the connection chain. Next in line are LED video processors, which are necessary for the correct operation of LED screens. They play a crucial role in converting images from outside sources, such as PCs, media players, etc., into an acceptable signal for LED screen. They are effective in changing the resolution, aspect ratio, shape, color space, and the image scaling of displays. In fact, these two types of hardware with slightly different approaches perform the same function. He adopts the picture to the display format. Top manufacturers include Novastar, Barco, ViewSonic, VD Wool, Magnet Image, and JTAG. Next, let's take a quick look at the peripherals that, when integrated with digital signage, make it smart. I'm talking about digital cameras and different types of sensors. For example, using digital cam connected to a screen, you can obtain data on content viewing, gender, age, and mood of the audience. Moreover, thanks to integration with digital signage software, you can show highly targeted content based on who is currently in front of your screen. Similar personalized cases can be implemented with the help of beacon sensors, which, using Bluetooth, recognize the smartphones of regular customers entering the store and instruct the digital screen to show a special offer based on their purchase history. Another example of smart devices are RFID tags or motion sensors. Their capabilities are most clearly visible in the case of the lift and learn solution, in which the buyer lifts a product from the display case and reads the information about it that instantly appears on a nearby screen. And finally, let's remember about GPS sensors, which for example, in case of public transportation, can trigger the display of the desired advertising message on the screen when passing through certain coordinates. Of course, these are not all smart devices that can be used in digital signage projects, but they have proven their effectiveness in real cases. Well, and that's all I have for today. If you liked this video, feel free to encourage us with a thumbs up. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next week in the final third episode of this course. I promise it will be interesting. Gabriel was with you. Bye.